Thank you. So one of the challenges of lecturing uh, synchronously to a large group for me has been uh, this depersonalized experience that Benjamin also talked about, both between me and the students, but also among the students. And I wonder how could they possibly be in community with uh, each other? Uh, next slide, please. So to render this online lecture more engaging for the students and for myself, I, I tried to introduce uh, any kind of interactive activity every 10 minutes, no matter what. Um, and these kind of interactions have uh, rendered the class more inclusive. Um, and I, I really tried to vary them because some might work for some students, but not others for all sorts of reasons, uh, ranging from uh, ability disabilities and, uh, but also social political context socioeconomic context, um, um, broadband tech, also the reasons why different tools might work differently for, for different students. So what you see here on the on the slide are just some examples of um, some of the basic things I use in an um, in an Anthro uh, class. Uh, you're familiar with with the chat function, with the small breakout room function, but the students might not be. And so I've, the first time I introduced any of these tools, I also gave a meta instructions step by step on how to access those function on uh, a zoom screen or whatever technology uh, you might be using in the class. So I think structure and time are key there. So I like to use the zoom chat by asking a very specific question, giving students one or two minutes to answer it. And then I pick and choose some of the answers and also give them and then talk about them, but also give them the option to um, write directly to me. Uh, if uh, particularly if the, the, the topic is a politically or, or a personal uh, one and they, they feel more comfortable just uh, uh, answering uh, anonymously to me. And for the breakout rooms, I also like to keep it short, four or five minutes, a clear task or a set of questions, a clear output. Sometimes a group leader writes a little report in the class chat. Sometimes it's just open-ended, just giving students an opportunity to connect. But I found having a, a, a prompt and a, a, a real a clearly defined time limit uh, was helpful for all of us. And I was teaching a 50 minutes block, so I didn't want to uh, spend too much time on long uh, breakout room discussions. Uh, next slide, please. So there are other things that um, I've played with to render the lecture more engaging. And so I discovered uh, props that I have ready available in my house are useful. So what you see in the slides there, this is an example of on, on a lecture on the gifts and commodities. And I, I tried to get my students to, uh, to, to give me an offer to buy my concertina. Uh, you, you can see it on the upper right there. And then I offered, I, I picked some volunteers and I offered them gifts. I offered them a family heirloom and I offered them a sticker from the American Anthropological Association. And the students refused the family heirloom. This belonged to my great, great, great grandmother, but they readily accepted the sticker, thereby opening up a discussion about how we value commodities and, and how gifts materialize social relationships. And that became like apparent to the students who couldn't possibly receive this heirloom uh, jewel from, from their professor. But the sticker materialized our relationships just uh, just perfectly. It's a freebie from our professional association. Fine for, for me to give, fine for the student to accept. And that rendered this kind of screen experience a little more like tangibly uh, concrete and, 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 and gave me, and, and I hope the students through the feeling of kind of breaking through the, the screen. And these are also technological gimmicks that require no technology other than a screen and sound. And finally, another thing you, you maybe can see in, in the screenshots there, there's like a tiny, um, Dinosaur origami uh, called Franz Boas. He's one of the uh, early 20th century anthropologists working in the US. And Franz Boas occasionally, the, as, as an origami, would give a little guest lecture or answer student questions on particularly sophisticated matters. Again, anything to, to kind of give a rhythm to the lecture where every 10 minutes we're, we're taking a break from the pace of, of me talking and, and the students have a chance to interact. And I think overall, uh, keeping that pace really helped give uh, a rhythm to the lecture that that built little community between me and the students, but also have the students uh, communicate with each other across long distances and various screens. How am I doing with, with, with time? 30 seconds. All right, this is, uh, that's all. So thank you, thank you so much for inviting me uh, here again. And I've, I've, I've learned so much from, from you. I look forward to the Q&A discussion.